right, so we're coming at you today with another requested video by many of our followers. Today what we're going to talk about is gauge installation and how you can utilize your factory old school gauges on your hemi swap. It's actually pretty easy. Uh, there's not a whole bunch of science to it. Um, so we'll just go ahead and jump right in, starting with this gauge cluster for our D150 project. So we went ahead and went to the salvage yard and we knew that we were running the five speed automatic transmission, which has a VSS sensor, so a vehicle speed sensor. It's an electronic pulse, it's a Hall Effect pulse um, that actually triggers an electronic speedometer. The problem is our 1989 D150 came with a cable driven speedometer. So what we did was we sourced this, we actually found out that the RAMs of the same body style into the late 90s, so 91, 93, actually had the exact same cluster setup but with a digital or electronic speedometer. So if you pull a cluster from a salvage yard you'll actually notice where the cable assembly would come through with a big uh, lock nut, the cable nut, is replaced now with this large white box protruding out of the circuit board. The wires are connected here so I believe it's uh, the blue wire right here is the vehicle speed sensor wire. I'll have to double confirm that. But what you can do is just hook up a wire to our harness and have electronic speedometer. As you can see, you have your other bulkhead fitting on the D150. This is really hasn't changed much over the years. So what you could do is simply run old school sending units and you'll have full functioning gauge. So let's go over them individually just to make sure we recap. Okay, First is the speedometer. For the electronic speedometer to work, you could get a cluster like this or you can get a Hall Effect signal generator and we'll reach out to that after I go over this. So again for this one you find the VSS or vehicle speed signal wire and then you'll simply tap directly into the correct port either on the body harness plug which is this guy here on the Jeep engine or you could tap directly in over here these are your two speed sensors, so you have rear and front. So you have input speed and output speed. You're worried about output speed, which is this guy right here. So you could tap into the signal wire here if you'd want to get your pulse generation, and that would drive your speedometer. Okay. So let's say you don't actually have that. I may have uh, a pulse generator here. So what you can do if you don't have um, this setup, right? Let's say you have a 69 charger or maybe an old A body that they never offered an electronic speedometer. What you can do is you can add, uh, there's an electronic motor, I think Dakota Digital makes it. You'll tie in your vehicle speed sensor into this box and the box will actually spin over a, a mini stepper motor which will drive a cable that will then thread into the original cable spot for your speedometer on the back of the gauge. So this box takes the pulse from the electronic speed signal and it'll convert it to an actual motor revolution and spin over your original gauge. Now if you are not running an electronic transmission, if you have an old school transmission, speedometer, what you would do there is you would take where the cable, there's going to be a cable that comes out here and we'll show you on the D150 in a follow-up episode. You'll take where the cable comes out of the transmission, you'll unthread it, and you can put in a, a signal generator so it converts cable drive to an electronic pulse which can drive this speedometer if you, you know, choose to run that setup like in your D150. Or, in the case of our CUDA, we just wanted to retain the original gauges and we retained the original transmission. So it was just as simple as keeping the cable drive from the transmission all the way up to the instrument cluster and we have a working speedometer. So depending on which transmission combination you go with is how you're going to sort out your speedometer. So it's, you have to look at the speedometer you want to use, electronic or manual, and the transmission electronic or manual and adapt to make the two work together. They do have products to make any one of those combinations work. That is the most difficult part of the gauge swap. Everything else is extremely easy. So now that we've talked about speedometer, 
let's go on to voltmeter. So your voltmeter is actually not bad at all. It's just you know, simply hooking up your 12 volt power wire to it just as you always did. And some of your older ones, your older gauges, A, B, E bodies that have the voltage regulator, you're going to make sure that's in good shape because you know these are really stout alternators putting out a lot of amperage. Just make sure it's a fresh one, not an old 50 year used one. I would replace that and you just connect the power wire as natural um, and it's going to work just fine. Engine coolant is another easy one. So as you may have seen from our spacer videos, we have an adapter to space up the thermostat so you can actually put the factory uh, gauge sending unit for your car. So if you had an a, uh, 70s A body, so a 72 duster, you would simply go to your auto parts store, get a sensor, a coolant temp sensor for that car, and it will thread right into that spacer. Okay then you would have a functioning coolant temperature gauge. Then over here for your oil pressure, I'm going to get Mike to come on over to this side of the engine. You'll actually notice here on this setup, behind the alternator on car and Jeep engines um, is where it's located. It's the same place on trucks, the alternator is just not nearby. You'll see these two ports right above the oil filter setup. So factory on a car, this is oil temperature, and on the other side of this alternator is uh, the oil pressure for the ECM. What you would want to do is remove the top plug. So that's a 3 8 inch NPT pipe plug. It's a 3 8 pipe plug. You're going to pull this out, and you're going to adapt from a 3 8 down to a 1 8 with a bushing. A, a pipe fitting adapter we use like a brass something that won't corrode and then immediately come out in 90 degree with a 90 degree 1 8 NPT fitting facing towards the back and you'll thread in the factory oil pressure sending unit for your vehicle so again if you're on that 72 duster get a 72 duster oil pressure sending unit and then that wire will run just as it did originally in the car back to the gauges and your factory gauges will work so now we've covered voltage, coolant temp, speedometer, and your oil pressure gauge. The last thing we're really going to look at is your fuel gauge. That is no different in your car. So if you're using your original fuel tank or a reproduction fuel tank that's made for EFI, that factory sending unit is all original. Just keep that exactly the same as it is right now. And now all of your gauges are going to work. So now that we've reviewed the gauge setup, we really appreciate you for sticking around with us and we want to let you know that in a future video, once we get the engine into the truck, we're going to be showing you physically every wire run exactly how this is all set up for this truck just to help you out. This was a great high level overview, but we know you want a little bit more detail, so we promise to follow up and give you that information. Sweet. Thanks, Blake. Please like and subscribe the DIY